Hello, everybody, and welcome to the stream. I hope everybody's doing well tonight. Singy over on the YouTube side, hello, how are you? Good to see you. And Magets over on the Twitch side, good to see you as well. So we are going to pick up uh, where we left off last time in our massive uh, refactor effort and uh, hopefully make some decent progress on that tonight. Um, I'm looking, I'm hoping to kind of get a little bit more of this refactoring stuff done very soon, um, hopefully so that we can move on to feature creation, but moving a lot of this stuff around has been kind of important. So it's been put off a long time. So sometimes you just got to bite the bullet, right? All right, so before we get into to anything further, I do want to take just a quick second and thank the supporters of the channel, starting with the partners. Uh, those are the highest tier of subscription over on Patreon and YouTube memberships. They are Dustin Punt, Gabby Bashir, and Gerboli's Inc. I'd also like to thank all of the other supporters listed here on the screen. They are a combination of the other tiers of support on YouTube memberships and Patreon, as well as Twitch subscriptions. So thank you all very much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. And I hope it goes without saying that uh, I, pre of course, appreciate uh, each and every one of you viewers, uh, whether you are here on the Twitch side or on the YouTube side. Uh, we do simulcast to both. Um, that being said, uh, this is an interactive stream, so I do keep an eye on both chats at once. So uh, if you guys have any questions or just want to chat, feel free to jump in and I will keep up to uh, the best of my ability, right? Um, RCW, how's it going? Good to see you. Yeah, good to have you here. Welcome, welcome. Okay. So, I'm just uh, trying to refresh my memory as to where we left off. Looks like I left my, myself a bunch of to-dos here. I've actually been working on um, something else sort of on the side that I'm going to be debuting here before too, too much longer, I have a feeling. But um, that's in addition to Kohi, right? So... Uh, let me see. It looks like we were in the middle of creating our internal or recreating our internal uh, texture structures. Um, and I wanted to create just a sort of forward declared struct um, within the texture and then leave it up to the renderer plugin um, to implement that. And uh, we still have to do that in addition to um, converting the rest of the plugin to conform to our new plugin standards that we have. So um, that is looking like where that's where we're going to pick up tonight. Uh, Nerdy Punk Dev, good to see you. Uh, love your shorts. Been feeling inspired by them. Awesome. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad they're circulating. I've actually, uh, <laughs> I need to get some more editing done and get some of those out there. I haven't haven't released some in a bit, but I'm glad that you're seeing them and I'm glad you enjoy them. That uh, That's very helpful, so thank you for that. Uh, your content's awesome, very insightful. Stoked to see people coding um, like in the old days. Awesome, yeah, um, I appreciate that. Thank you for that. Uh, Roman General, good to see you. How, how are you? Hope, hope everything is well. Okay. So it looks like uh, our texture system is bleating about the internal data. That's the old structure, the, the void pointer that we had uh, that we need to make sure we get rid of all references to that um, and replace it with our sort of internal structure. Everything's good? Good, I'm glad to hear that. Um, so basically anywhere that says internal data, we're going to get rid of that. Um, and then I believe we are also refactoring the way that textures are created. So we have this um, acquire and release on the renderer end for resources, right? Because it doesn't really make sense to have like a, a texture load, right? Because um, really all you're doing, like you've loaded the texture into CPU, all you're really doing is moving that over to the GPU um, and acquiring resources to do that. So um, we've split that up into uh, a few, uh, or a little bit of a different API. Uh, and instead of when we're acquiring a texture, um, instead of acquiring the, or taking in a texture pointer, right? We, we sort of pass all these flags and then we return a um, renderer texture ID, right? And that renderer texture ID is what gets stored on the texture um, structure itself. 
And then uh, whenever we do anything with that texture, instead of uh, passing the texture itself, we pass the texture ID. Um, and that texture ID will then do an internal lookup uh, to get the actual uh, underlying um, resource. And that underlying resource um, can have multiple underlying resources and it can have uh, textures that are created per frame. That's the whole reason we're doing this. Um, and that's to get rid of the concept of having um, the renderer or anywhere else in the engine have to worry about, are we double buffering? Are we triple, buff triple buffering? Um, et cetera, uh, because we don't want the rest of the engine to have to worry about that. That should be completely abstracted to the renderer, um, specifically to the renderer backend. Um, and so that's, that's kind of where we left off, right? We're in, we're in the middle of doing that. Uh, let's see, got me off my butt and finally started working on my engine. You do C and NeoVim and I'm doing C++ and do me max. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, we're opposites, but it's all in good fun. It, uh, yeah, I agree, right? Like whatever tool you choose to use, um, you know, whatever works for you, that's, that's fine, right? There's... There's no elitism around here about um, you know the tool sets that you use. I have mine that I prefer. Not everybody prefers those, and that's okay. I do make jokes about VS Code, right? But none of them are serious. Uh, if you want to use VS Code, use VS Code. There's a reason I have have configuration and support for it, right? Smudge, good to see you. How's it going? Welcome. <laughs> Unless you use Rust. Well, you know, now you've just taken it too far, Smudge. Can't. I mean, this is a family-friendly stream. We can't be talking about Rust, you know? Can't be having that. Can't be talking about C++ either. That's 18 plus, you know? Can't have that. This week is all about research and memory allocators for me. Nice. Memory allocators are fun. I want to write some more, actually. Um, <laughs> Rust hate. Yeah, no, I mean, it's not really, like, serious Rust hate. We just like to joke about it. Um, uh, doing well, got a new car over the weekend. Oh, congrats, Smudge. That's awesome. What'd you get out of curiosity, if you don't mind saying? New, not new. Hey, that's fine. I get that. Totally get that. Doesn't always make sense to buy new, right? Okay. So. I think the question that I was having was this whole lookup system that we're talking about specifically like when we go to re release resources by the render texture ID or really do anything right so we're going to replace all these things um, where we're passing a texture pointer all those things are going to be replaced by this this render texture ID um, so the real question about this is like the renderer backend is where all the resources are going to be stored right so in the case of Vulkan it's going to be the image the view and the memory right um, in OpenGL, that's just going to be a number, right? So an OpenGL will probably literally just stuff that in here or something. Um, but <clears throat> I guess, you know, the question is, does it make sense to store a lookup of those in the front end? And then um, let the back end say, you know, how big each element is um, and so forth. Like maybe that's the way to do it because we only have to implement it once that way versus if we do it, um, per back end, we've got to implement that same logic per back end, which seems gross. Uh, I think I just answered my own question. So I think I'm going to do it in the front end and have the front end reach it out to the back end and say, hey, um, how much memory do I need to reserve for each element in my lookup table? Um, and we're going to kind of follow a little bit of our handle system here. I don't think I'm going to actually, actually use... Well, maybe I should just use handles. But textures on the front end, like out of the texture system, are going to use handles. So I don't know if I wanted to use that twice. That might get confusing. I'm going to try it with IDs first. I'm trying to think if I... Well, if I do it with an ID, though... I probably should just use handles actually. Because then I can also tell when the back end reference is stale versus up to date. And I don't have to keep a separate generation counter. Okay. 
we're going to change this a little bit. We're going to use a K handle instead. Uh, K handle. Uh, and we're going to say out. Render texture handle. All right. And I realize that uh, that's going to conflict with the front end. Um, let's see, texture, resources acquire. Uh, we're going to change this to be uh, K handle. Out render texture handle. Right. Um, do we not have? Yeah. Okay. So we need handles included there. Um, okay. And then here, instead of this, it's going to be handle a pointer to hold the render texture handle, which Spelled points wrong to the backing resources of the texture. Okay, so that should be fine. Uh, this should be the same way. I just realized I'm probably coding behind my head. You guys probably can't see what I'm typing, right? Um, so this is gonna be the handle of the render textures whose resources are gonna be released, okay. So let's get rid of that. Uh, we'll change both of these to be K handles, right? Um, and then we'll just do a internal handle lookup on these things. Um, and I think what we can do is we can have on our, our texture itself. Let's get rid of that. And let's get rid of, let's get rid of this for a second and go to um, resource types, which I think is where texture is actually defined. Here we go. All right, so um, in texture, we already have a unique identifier, which that's probably going to get replaced with a handle. In fact, in fact, let's go ahead and, well, no. I'm not going to touch that for right now, actually, but I'm going to put a to-do in here. Replace with UID um, to match handle. Um, and the texture itself is actually going to become an internal structure. Uh, and the reason we're going to do that is because we want to deal with handles, not actually pointers to texture structures everywhere. So, Matus, thank you for uh, the follow there. I appreciate that. Welcome. Coffee Lava, how's it going? Good to see you. How's it going, dude? Uh, let's see. Seems like temporal anti-aliasing plus hash transparency with blue noise can yield quite a good result for pseudo-transparency. I mean, that makes sense on the surface anyway. I can't wait to experiment with that kind of stuff. Um, you got a Focus RS, if you're familiar with that. Uh, it's the performance model of the Focus. Boy, is it fast. Is that the one that comes with a, um, with a manual? That's the four, that's the four uh, or the all-wheel drive one, right? If that's if I'm thinking of the right one. I think the ST is still front wheel drive, but the R, the RS I think is the that's the all wheel drive one, right? I wanted to test drive one of those when I was looking um, when I was looking at cars years ago when I bought my Subaru, but I want my I bought my Subaru because I couldn't test drive one of those, and because I've always loved the Subaru. But yeah, that Focus RS is a friggin' sweet car. Those things are pretty fast. I think they've got like 350 brake horsepower or something like that. If I'm thinking of the right one. 
Uh, Philippe, how's it going? Oh, you're from Brazil too. <laughs> nice. A bunch of our uh, folks over on the Twitch side are um, are are from there as well. Some of our regulars are from there as well. Glad to have you here. Uh, are you a WRX enjoyer? Yes, I have a uh, 2016 WRX STI uh, Limited. Yeah, that's my that's my baby. I don't know if I have a um, I don't know if I have a picture on my computer of it, but I can see if I can dig one up in a bit. Uh, exactly right. Yeah, 350. Okay, that is the one I was thinking of. Yep. Both six-speed manual. Yeah. Yeah, I remember looking at the specs for that when it came out, and those things are awesome. Um. And yeah, definitely. Congrats on that. That's a sweet. Uh, that's a sweet ride. Psycode, how's it going? Good to see you. Um, okay, so we want to replace this with a K handle. Um, and this is going to be the renderer texture handle. Uh, the handle two renderer specific texture data. Okay. So we're going to leverage our, our, uh, our handle system more than once, technically. Um, so as far as our renderer goes, all it's ever going to, all it's ever going to receive when we're talking about textures is a handle to a texture. It's not going to uh, know or care about much else, right? Cause this is like, this kind of stuff is, is what the, the front end cares about, right? The back end doesn't really care about this stuff. Well, and this is mostly just properties that are sort of exposed if we even need them. Um, but the back end doesn't really care about that, right? So um, let's see. So in the the renderer itself, the system state, um, let's see, we have texture lookups. So it looks like we got somewhere with this. Uh, let's go to definition on that. Um, okay, and so here we have an ID and an internal data. So what we should probably, we should probably re replace this with a, uh, a U64. And we're gonna call this unique ID. And that's gonna match up with the unique ID of a handle that, um, that refers to it, right? So we're essentially gonna have a lookup of these things. And then uh, whenever we actually create a, like texture backend data or internal data, um, we will stand one of these up from the back end. Um, okay, so we have we have that. Um, that's a D array. So okay. So I guess what we need to do is actually implement the um, not only the lookup but the insert and the deletion of that. Okay, so let's get rid of that. And uh, we'll do, first of all, uh, if we have state, if, I guess if we don't have state, um, you know, obviously return false, because we need that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the first thing that we need to do is uh, we need to, um, I guess we can say if not state um, textures DRA creates state textures um, and then we can loop through that so we'll say u32 texture counts equals DRA length um, state textures uh, for u32 i equals zero i is less than texture count plus plus i and um, what we'll basically do is uh, any of these that have a invalid ID um, 
on the as the UUID uh, is going to be considered a free slot, right? So um, if actually let's go ahead and grab a convenience pointer to that, I guess. Texture lookup lookup uh, lookup equals um, the address of state textures sub i if lookup unique ID equals valid ID u64 found a free slot use it All right so uh, what we'll do here is um, we will we'll need to create a handle so we'll say uh, k handle create um, and the index that we're going to use is i, right? And so uh, we'll do k handle new handle equals that. Um, that'll automatically give us our ID. So now we can say lookup unique ID equals new handle unique ID unique ID, right? So we'll grab the unique ID from that. Um, and then we'll need to actually stand up um, that texture data, which I suppose we could also have the front end manage that as well. Because we could just tell, um, have the back end tell us how large that is. So um, let's do a K allocate and um, we're gonna do state what do I want to call this? Um, I guess we'll do backend. Um, texture internal data size, right? And we'll do memory tag renderer on that. All right now, obviously we don't have this declared yet, so we're gonna have to fill that out. Um, so we'll stand up a new one of those and then we'll need to reach out to the back end. So we'll say, uh, state back end. Um, do we have, no, we don't have that set up either. Okay. So it's going to be uh, texture resources acquire, um, and what we can do is pass the lookup um, data. And I think that's actually all we need to do, right? So we can actually, uh, we're gonna make that return a Boolean, so we'll say return. And that really should be uh, we may have to pass some other flags to it, right? We should probably actually, we're going to have to pass all this other stuff to it. Um, right, so actually, let's just do, let's do this. Right, and let's see. So we'll pass the texture type. Pass the width, pass the height, pass the channel count, the MIP levels, the array size, texture flags. Uh, we don't need to pass the handle though. All right. So we'll pass all that stuff back. Um, that way the back end knows exactly what it needs to do to acquire those resources. And then if we get to the end of this and there are no free slots, then we have to handle that as well. So uh, let me scroll this up a little bit so you guys can see that. Yep. All right, so um, no free slots, I'll add one. So what we'll do here in this case is um, we'll do texture lookup, new lookup, right? And um, we'll do a basically all this same stuff. 
All right, so I'm actually just going to copy pasta it down here. Um, the only difference being is this is going to be based on the index of texture count, right? Because it's going to be inserted right at the end of the array, so we can use that count. Um, and then we can say uh, new lookup unique ID is equal to the new handle. Um, and then we want to k allocate that the same way. Um, oh, you know what? We didn't we didn't store that off here. We can store that off. That needs to be uh, lookup data equals. And then this here will be um, lookup dot, or new lookup rather, new lookup dot data is equal to that, right? Um, and then change this to new lookup dot data and uh, right before we do that we'll do d array um, push and we'll do state uh, textures and the value we'll push there is new lookup right and so that's the entire process uh, from the front end anyways uh, of doing this so obviously um, we've got some some blanks to fill in here um, and some things to figure out, but that's uh, more or less the, the structure that I'm thinking of. All right, uh, let me catch up on chats. The one and only Coffee Lava. Yeah, he is in here. Got into Vulcan again. Is it possible to do your own synchronization and ditch semaphores and fences? Um, I don't think you can ditch semaphores. Right, because that's GPU to GPU. I don't. I mean, that's that's internal to the GPU. So I don't. I don't think you can really do that. I think um, fences you might be able to work without, but then again, why would you? I mean, it already kind of provides that for you. So I don't know. I I don't know if I would do without that. To be honest, <laughs> you got the wrong guy. No coffee lava. We know it's you. All we have to do is start talking about ECS to trigger you. Then we'll know it's you. Uh, you're thrilled about it. Is your STI manual, uh, are they all manual, like Subarus, but don't know a ton about them? Yeah, so um, starting in, I think it was 2016, um, the WRX could come in an automatic, uh, but the STI was still manual only. They only come in manual. Um, so yeah, it's a, mine's a six-speed. Um, it's got uh, 305 horsepower, six-speed manual. Um, yeah, love it. They discontinued it, unfortunately. They don't make them anymore. Um, as of 2022, I think. But uh, yeah, that's my baby. I love that car. And so yeah, you're going to have a lot of fun with that one. Taman, how's it going? Good to see you. Welcome. I am doing well. How about you? Is that Clang D? Yes, it is. Um, good evening. Are you able to go to implementation in NeoVim? Yes, I am. Yep. Some semaphores are a must. Exactly. Yeah. Um, not aware. Not aware of any way to ditch barriers. Yeah, I don't think you can ditch that either. Semaphores are pretty primitive, so I'd be. It'd be interesting to see if you could ditch them. I don't think you can because they're internal to the GPU, right? All you can do is is essentially reference. It's essentially an ID is all you get, right? You can't even, like, there's not much you can do with them. We're going to have ads here in a second. Um, at least for Direct3D12, you can't ditch fences. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think you can completely invoke it either. Um, aren't there also signals in Vulcans or, yeah, they're called events. Yep. Because you need to pass a iDirect 3D 12 fence object to the signal, the command queue. Yeah, exactly. Same thing for Vulcan. We have ads. Uh, oh, KP, you have a 2014 hatch. Nice. 
Oh, and a broken head gasket. Ugh. That scares me, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> the head gasket thing does scare me, but... Nothing I haven't dealt with before. I had a super that had a, um, a head gasket blown on it, so it's not the first time we've seen it. Yeah, the um, the 2014, I really like those ones, actually. Um, do, so it, the one that you have, is it a... Um, is it a WRX or is it an STI? Of course, I mean, you can get STI parts and put it on there. <laughs> but just out of curiosity. I wish they still made a hatchback, honestly. Well, I, I wish they made a WRX hatchback, hatchback. I know they make a Impreza hatchback, but it's not the same thing anymore. We are... Almost done with ads. Got about 12 seconds. Max, good to see you over there on the YouTube side. How are you doing? All right. Ads are dead. So let me just finish catching up on chat here. What a shame I felt the same when the Saturn, Saturn went out of business with a great little car. Yeah, those things were kind of diehard. Um, oh, yay. A, uh, a spam message. Why can't I? Hmm. It won't let me. Give me just one second. I'm trying to figure out. Um, there we go. It won't let me remove that message for some reason. There it is. Okay. Um, spam bots. Yeah, exactly. Need a band stick. Yep, exactly. Taken care of. Um, <laughs> coffee. <laughs> always a sense, always a source of amusement, my friend. Always glad to have you here. All right. Uh, hi, I love your content. I actually, love C. Uh, and beginner in Vulcan. Well, welcome. Glad to have you here. All right. So, um, so we've got our lookup here created. So I think the next thing that we probably are going to need to do is like provide um, this bit where uh, we can actually fill this out, um, this texture internal data size, so that we know how much uh, memory to actually allocate on the front end. Um, did I... This needs to be texture lookup. Um, I did this completely wrong. This needs to be that. Okay. All right, so let's take this guy. And go to, go to here. Uh, Safe for Serial, thank you for the, uh, the Prime. I appreciate that. Appreciate the support. Ignacio, how's it going? Welcome. Uh, let's see. Uh, can I help you with what exactly, Kakali? I don't know if that I'll be able to help on stream, but um, if you're running into like a Discord, or a, if you're running into a Vulcan issue, the Discord server is available. Um, I might be able to look into something later on there. Uh, here, I'll drop a link. If my bot is going to work tonight. Apparently not. 
All right. Does it work on this side? What is with Streamlabs bot tonight? Is it just like... Because it should have caught that um, that link message too. It's like the bot is just down or something. That's pretty cool. Um, all right. So I guess... Um, I guess I'll just have to kind of work without that tonight. All right, so let's go to let's go to the top of this uh, this renderer backend interface. So we'll go up here, um, and we'll paste this like here. Uh, that's going to be U sixty four because it's a size, right? Um, and this is just going to be uh, the size needed by the renderer backend to hold texture data, right? Um, and so we'll have to obviously set that up uh, from the renderer backend, but at least we have what we need there. Um, so at least on this side, uh, we can say, hey, we have, is that supposed to be a, yeah, it needs to be an arrow. Um, we can at least, you know, allocate this for however big it needs to be. So now, texture resources acquire is also a function pointer that the backend interface needs. And that is going to look a lot like this one. So I'm going to take this and we're going to take a look at uh, texture internal data size. Uh, let's just go to definition on that. And... Um, Right, so we have our texture create and our texture destroy. Uh, these are gonna get replaced. In fact, I'm just gonna pull off the Band-Aid now and remove those guys, um, and replace it with acquire, right? So uh, let's see, we have texture resources acquire. Uh, let's turn this into a function pointer. Um, and then we need uh, the back end, right? So we need that. Uh, right. Um, all right. And let's, I guess I could take this description. We actually really don't need that at this level because um, it's all provided on the front, the front end. Um, so let's remove texture create, right? And I'm going to remove texture destroy as well because we don't need those anymore. And uh, a lot of these other ones are going to be changing too. Um, so we have acquire, which gives us uh, everything we need, except, uh, let's see. So that's going to require the data. So we're going to need um, struct, um, Texture internal data, um, data, right? And I think that's what we called it anyway. I believe. Internal data size, lookup data, struct and in texture internal data. Okay, that is right. All right, so um, we need to forward declare this. So, um, I guess we'll do it. I guess I can just go to the top and do it. It's fine. All right, so we have that. All right, and then and then the other half of this is uh, we have our acquire, and then we have our release. Let's put that here. So we'll do the same thing here. Uh, 
And I think the only thing is that we need to actually pass here are these two. So we don't need the handle or any of that other stuff. We just need the backend interface and a pointer to the actual data itself. Okay. That makes sense, at least on the surface. So let's go back to the front end. Um, okay, so we have that. Uh, we need to convert these operators because I got that wrong. Okay. Uh, what else is this looking at? Um, Oh, right, it needs the back end. So we need um, state.back end. And we need that. There as well. Um, look up data. What else is this missing? Too few arguments. So we have the backend interface, the lookup data, and then the texture type and all that other stuff after it. Oh, I forgot to remove the handle. I forgot to remove the handle. Okay, there we go. Now we're looking pretty good. All right, um, let me just check. Can I ask how you're storing the various models in your scene? Are they all added to a hash table or a vector? Yeah, so ultimately um, all of the model, uh, all, the, all the meshes are in vectors, right? Essentially. Um, we call it a DRA, but it's the same idea, right? Um, and then we have handles to those things that we use to um, to refer to them, right? So um, the handles are used in our hierarchy graph um, as well as our, um, our transform system to look up transforms and, and hierarchy and figure out how those things are um, or parented, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, um, we actually have uh, a set of views, if you will, within uh, the scene system that is responsible for managing those. But all of the uh, actual uh, things themselves, so all of the, um, if we had more than one skybox, um, all the lights, all the meshes, all the terrains, if we had more than one, all that stuff is all stored in arrays. Um, and we just index into that by handles. So yeah, um, we don't have the ability to refer to them by names yet, um, but we do refer to them by handles. Uh, what NeoVim theme is this? This is uh, Adweta. Yeah, so um, I will, let me grab a, um, I'm gonna have to paste this manually for some reason because my chat bot is acting up tonight. But um, I actually have a detailed uh, NeoVim setup article here. I'll drop it in both sides of the chat. All right. Um, oh, thank you for the hydrate redeem. Can you actually implement reliable synchronization primitives without actually dealing with kernel code? Like condition variable, for example, does uh, the pthread one work on Win32? Um, isn't the scheduler di dictating the synchronization? Under the hood, yes it is. Um, I haven't tried the pthread one on Win32, so I don't know, to be honest. I use, on Win32, I just use the Win32 API. Greetings from Argentina, awesome. Uh, good air. Do you do you speak Spanish? No, um, I don't, unfortunately. Oh well, okay, only the bad words. <laughs> but unfortunately, no, um, I, I don't. 
but welcome. Uh, glad to have you here. Okay. You're planning a rework of your config soon? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so that's a um, that's a detailed listing of all the plugins that I use, um, and then it also has a link to my um, NeoVim config. All right, so I think we've solved all of this lookup stuff. Um, so let me see how much of this to do I can get rid of here. Okay, probably most of this because I think we actually just put all of this in. Set the new ID only on success or failure of all of these steps and return true. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um, so really the crux of this thing will be, does this does this work, right? Um, I suppose we could do, I suppose we could do this step first. And if and only the, if that works, then we do all this. Maybe that's the safer way to do it, right? Because that is a good point. Like we probably shouldn't, input it into our lookup array if it doesn't succeed. So yeah, let's actually refactor this a little bit. Um, so what we can do is uh, the data either way gets allocated, right? So uh, we can actually, we can take that and put it up here. Um, and this is, we're gonna call this um, texture internal data. Um, and we'll just do data. Right. Uh, let's see. What is this bleating about? Oh, do we not? Oh, right. Um, right. Cause that's not defined on the front end. Okay. So we allocate that. Then we can do this. Right, um, and so instead of returning right here, what we'll do is we'll say b8 success equals this, right? And then if, and only if, on success, do we do the rest of this stuff, right? And then here we just do return success, right? Um, and so, Instead of lookup data equaling that, uh, we'll just set this to data, and we'll set this to data. Yeah, that makes the most sense. So um, only insert into the lookup table on success. I'm going to use the term lookup table liberally, right? Um, okay. Loosely, I should say, is the word I'm looking for. All right, so we pass data through there. Everything else should be good. Okay. I'm glad I put that note. Um, this fails, make sure to back off any created resources in the back end. Okay, so we don't actually need to do that. Um, what we will do though, is we will say else uh, k-free. Um, and we'll do data. Uh, and we'll do uh, states back end, oops. Uh, what was it? Um, texture internal data size memory tag, and when we're freeing that, when we're freeing that, we do it under tag renderer. Um, Right, so if we fail that, uh, we'll go ahead and clean up that memory, and then we're good. 
Okay, cool. So, don't need that. That's done. So, the next thing that we need to do is our release. All right, so this is going to be um, a little bit simpler. So, um, obviously, if we don't have state, um, there's nothing we can do. So, uh, actually, I'll just I'll turn this into a positive check. Um, so we need to do a lookup. So the first thing I'm going to check is if uh, k handle is invalid, right? So we're going to take a look at the renderer texture ID, which is actually the wrong name for it, but I'll change that in a second. Um, so if the handle is not invalid, then we'll continue. Uh, so let's rename this. Uh, this is going to be render texture handle. Handle? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, um, so if this is valid, um, I think all we actually need to do is say uh, state backend texture resources release. Um, and then we need to pass the states back end and uh, we need to actually perform the lookup. So we need a uh, texture lookup. Oh, that is the address of um, states textures sub render texture handle unique ID. Um, no, not unique ID, candle index, right? So we look that up. Um, to this, we pass lookup data. Scroll this up a little bit. Um, so we do lookup data, and I think that's actually all that's required for that release. Now, before we do this release, we need to verify a couple of things. Um, first, we need to make sure that the um, handles match, right? So we've already made sure that the handle is not invalid, but um, we need to make sure that, um, let's see, do we have a K handle? I don't think we actually do. Yeah, I could just do it manually. Okay, so um, if, uh, let's say lookup, dot unique ID is not equal to um, render texture handle unique ID whoops unique ID unique ID right so if those two things aren't equal then that means we have a stale handle so what we'll do is we'll do k warn um, stale handle um, Passed while trying to release um, renderer texture resources. Right? Um, and at this point, we're just going to return. Right? We're not actually going to do it. And the reason I'm saying warn here uh, is because there's not really, you know, we can throw an error, I guess, but it doesn't really, it's not going to stop the application. The worst thing that's going to happen is maybe some back end resources won't be released properly. Um, but again, our handle really shouldn't be getting stale either, right? It's just kind of a, an extra safeguard that we have. So we go ahead and release that. Um, and then afterwards, we do a k-free of um, lookup data. And that's going to be uh, states backend texture internal data size and mem tag renderer, right? So we free that up, set lookup data to zero and lookup unique ID to invalid ID U64, right? So we invalidate the entry as well. That way if we go to look that up, we say, hey, you know, there's nothing here. This is, this is considered a free slot, right? Um, 
and that's it, right? Other than hooking up the back end portion of that. Vtable3, thank you for the follow. Uh, Ruche, thank you for the posture check. My posture is rubbish at the moment, so good call there. All right. Let me see. Just now started with your tutorial on Kohi. It's crazy how much you've changed IRL and your workflow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, definitely uh, modified over time for sure. Is state textures considered an arena? No, it's just an array. It's just an array of structures, right? Oop and C, not really. We're not really doing much oop at all. I mean, the, the closest thing we have to oop is actually our UI system. But I wouldn't consider this oop at all. This is really just dealing with structures of data, right? Arrays of structures, or in some case, structures of arrays. All right. Just being humble, I hear he speaks fluent Spanish. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'll say this, like, anytime I hear the word puta or pinga, I know that whatever's being discussed is hilarious, but that's about it. <laughs> I mean, I know a couple of other ones, you know, like coño, but that's about it. Uh, the condition variable in Win API doesn't exist for ancient Windows versions. That's true. Um, not that I need to support them because I use Vulkan anyways, but yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, well, and Windows 10 is going to be um, leaving Microsoft support next year. In, what was it? October. So that really won't be an issue at some point. Because I can, I can tell you what. When... Microsoft end of end of life's Windows 10. I'm not going to support it either. I'm not going to support an out of date OS. Just not doing it. It's good enough. That's all you need, really. See, yeah, okay. Well, then I'm fluent, then, right? <laughs> Got all the major ones. <laughs> yeah, I know some other ones that I'm not going to that I'm not going to say on stream, but yeah, I, I know those ones. <laughs> You worked a construction job and all the guys taught you way more than it. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, let's see. Oop does not mean encapsulation of methods and classes. I mean, that's only part of it, right? That's one of the one of the pillars of Oop, but not the only one. From what you can see, it seems that the code design is oriented around objects as a paradigm. Um... In some cases, some in some cases we're actually trying to get rid of that. Like what we're trying to do in the um, with textures is we're trying to we're trying to deal specifically with handles to get away from passing structs all over the place. Because pointers to structs kind of suck when you're dealing with um, resources. So. How's it going? Uh, hair, I think it's... Uh, I assume that's how you pronounce it. Hair? Good to see you. Um, wait, run that back a sec. What's happening with Windows 10? Yeah, so uh, hang on a second. That is what's happening with Windows 10. Windows 10 is reaching end of support October 14th, 2025. Heads up. In case nobody knew that. <laughs> yeah, FML indeed. <laughs> Speaking of FML, we have ads. I do want to pick that conversation up on the other side of this, though, because, yeah, it's definitely a, uh, 
it's definitely a, a thing, right? That we should probably talk about. Got about a minute left on ads and then we can pick that back up. Almost there, got about 20 seconds left. Oh, that's right, Ivoka. I, I forgot that that's, yeah, I forgot that that was you. I'm so used to seeing you on Discord that I forgot that was you. All right. Um, <laughs> and now you feel old. Yeah, I get that. Um, I mean, I remember vividly when Windows Vista came out because I was working in CompUSA at the time. <laughs> and that was brand new. Boy, did, boy, was that a nightmare to support. Um, so let's see. How does the texture read pixel work? Do you copy larger pixel chunk from the texture? I mean, are you copying a subtexture piece? Essentially. It's just a direct memory copy. The day I'm forced to switch to Windows 11 will be a sad day for me. So, um, that's the thing is like, I've actually, I switched over to Windows 11 maybe three years ago at this point or so. Just because I, I knew eventually that was going to happen and I wanted to sort of head off any curveballs ahead, you know, that I was going to run into ahead of time. So I've actually been running it for quite a while and I haven't really had any issues about it. I know a lot of people talk about like performance and stuff, but I haven't really seen any performance issues with it whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I, I haven't really seen any issues with it personally. Other than the, you know, some of the stupid design decisions that they made with the UI. Didn't vibe with uh, Windows 11 at all. Yeah, that's fair enough. Switch to Linux. I've already done that. That's what I'm on now. Yeah. Be a hero and use unsupported software. I mean, one could argue uh, certain facets of Linux is doing just that, right? Me to buy a new PC and this junk can, can't run Windows 11, Microsoft said. Yeah, I, I wonder if they're going to back that off. Right? The whole secure boot thing. You have a first gen Ryzen. Not sure it's supported. Not going to find out either. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, it's a good excuse to just switch to um, switch to Linux, right? Just happy that my 2019 laptop works okay with Windows 11. Yeah, I mean, anything. I think anything built within the last seven years or so should be fine. The Terminator TV show Chronicles of Sarah Connor had a Windows Vista PC. Had Windows Vista PCs at some PC store. That's hilarious. Need to get a machine, new machine eventually. Something with real power to keep doing engine and game dev. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, when I when I built this machine, I, I tried to build it like as future proof as possible as possible. So I don't really go so far, obviously, but just get something with upgrade room, essentially. Having WSL on Windows is nice. Yeah, WSL is like, WSL is good for a lot of things. Um, it's really good for web development um, and like application development. It's not so great for graphics development, unless that's changed. I mean, there are ways to do it. Like you can set up an X server on Windows, but boy, is that weird. Um, so yeah, I mean, as far as far as far as that goes, it's a little bit weird, but... If you're doing stuff that doesn't involve UI and doesn't involve, um, you know, GPU res resources, you're generally good to use that. I've used that quite quite extensively in the past. Um, 
I think having a low end PC is good for engine dev to sort of cover your back at the lower end. Yeah, so um, I do have a lower end laptop that I use. That's, I mean, that thing is probably from like 2016 or maybe even older than that. Um, that I use for low spec testing. So yeah, definitely good to have some of those around for sure. All right. But yeah, um, heads up, this is the thing that's going to happen. So, you got a year. Well, I guess like a year and a half, right? Okay. So... I'm trying to think if there was anything else... I suppose we could think about setting up the, uh, the the back end portion of this, right? So the Vulkan back end, we have uh, render texture create, and okay, we even have our to dos in here to remove deprecated. I don't think though texture resources acquire, okay. So it looks like I actually started stubbing this out on the back end first. Okay. So we're calling this texture data. Let me just do a quick double check here. So we have the data, the type, with all that stuff. Okay, all the way down to here, which this we don't actually need. So flags should be the last thing. Yep, okay. So, Okay, so what we're doing here is one of the texture flags that we can set is whether or not we need to worry about render, render buffering. And this is basically going to be the only thing from the front end that is ever going to be aware of this. Um, and this is purely for specialized cases where like in our render graph, where we have to have you know a per frame resource, all we have to do now is pass a flag, um, this particular flag, um, and uh, on the back end we will know to create um, enough images for that. So um, we either have an image count of that or we have an image count of one, and then uh, we allocate our Vulkan images. Um, we figure out our usage, our aspect, our formats uh, based on our um, our past properties. Um, and then we go through our image count, create as many images as we need, and then return true. So this section is already actually done. Um, and it looks like uh, the resources acquire. Oh, why is this called acquire? This shouldn't be called acquire. This should be called release. Okay. So um, all we're doing here is essentially releasing those internal resources. Um, okay, so I guess that's already hooked up as well. So that's good. Um, so it looks like we'll have to go through and like convert the rest of these functions to use um, this texture internal data instead of a texture directly. Um, okay. I'm not too mad at that. Uh, I do need to go though to here and yeah, that's what I thought. I don't have these. Um, I don't have these declared on the on the header file. 
Uh, so I guess I'll just grab this. And this. I'll cheat a little bit. And I guess I'll put it here. Right, so we'll do this. Delete all that. And then release. We'll have it there. Right, and I'm actually going to get rid of those three. Right off the bat. So now our, um, our Vulcan renderer has that. Um, our render types... We got rid of the um, create and destroy, but we did not get rid of the create right of all that needs to go as well. Aru Tyru, thank you for the uh, the follow. Appreciate that. Welcome. I was like, oh, 2025, that's so far away. No, it's next year. <laughs> exactly. That was why when I when I said that I was like, hmm, I should probably pull that up so I can like put that on blast, right? All right. Um. So. Do I want to convert the rest of those now? I probably should. I do also need to take a look at. Um. Plug-in main for Vulcan. Yeah, who oh boy. A lot of these are wrong. You know what? Maybe I'll fix all this at the end. Once we've refactored all of our all of our functions. Um So we have Actually I can just rename these. Um Texture, resources, acquire, and texture, resources, release. And this is going to be sources, acquire. Well, I didn't want the whole thing. Right. Um, rid of that one. Okay. Um, so here's release. So we'll do resources. Release. Um, and then this create writable goes away. Right. Okay. All right, um, so texture right data, texture resize. Okay, I guess let's go ahead and refactor the rest of these texture functions because I don't think any of these necessarily need to change in terms of what they do. I think we really just need to, instead of taking a texture pointer, right, we're gonna take a texture in date, internal data pointer. Um, oops. So I guess we'll do this. I wonder if I can do that more than should be able to repeat that.
Okay. There's only a few of them, so that's good. Um, pointer to the texture internal data to be read from. Uh, one more. internal data be written to and then resize okay so that means our render backend will need these changes as well So these four guys, instead of that, we're going to have um, I think I need a struct here. Change three words, struct, texture, internal, data, pointer, texture, data right and now we should be able to do that and that right and then all right so let's release um So we can do struct, texture, internal, data, um, texture, data. And we can do that there. We can do that there. there and here okay I think that's it yes okay all right so um, I'm also going to convert this to be one line because I can't stand how it auto formatted that on multiple lines for me and I guess we just need to go through and make these changes uh, fit, right? Still disappointing that we don't have flying cars, but hey, at least we have Vulcan, right? Yeah, I know, right? Um, well, I mean, you do have flying cars in the sense that like people fly down the highway, right? And sometimes off the end of a bridge because they're because they're speeding, right? So it flies for a second, but that that's about it. Hey, Apotham, how's it going? Good to see you. Hope everything is well. Uh, let's see. You don't fix your comments when changing parameters? Yeah, so, um, yeah, I just did. Yeah, so uh, some of the comments I'm probably going to get rid of, right? Some of the documentation comments I might get rid of. Like on the um, on the actual uh, plugin interface, I might get rid of those just because that's kind of annoying, but... Haven't you ever seen the flying Tesla? I've seen a couple fly. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> there actually is a Czech business that is flying around in a car prototype. That's pretty cool. I think uh, the bummer about it is it's just not practical, right? Like flying cars would be amazing, but they're just not practical. It takes too much fuel to keep them in the air.
you drive a car off the highway, you'll fly that car for the rest of your life. That's true. It absolutely is true. Yep. On the windshield, yep. Flies on cars on the windshield. Yeah, exactly. Um, around here, if the police are passing you, then you're not going fast enough. Yeah, that sounds like Florida driving, honestly. It's been crazy but good. Switched jobs and my parents came to visit at the same time. Well, I hope that's a good thing. <laughs> but yeah. Um, you, you never know. Some people it's a good thing. Some people it's not, right? But yeah. Um, so I hope the, the job switch is, is good. I hope you're liking it. Um, that sounds awesome. And I do know what you mean because I recently switched jobs myself. So... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, um, I say that because I used to live in Florida. I lived in Florida for most of my life. Um, South Florida. Yeah, so um, on I-95 down there, if you're not driving 90 miles an hour, you're not driving fast enough. For sure. And even then, you get people that run up on you like you're not moving. So, yeah. <laughs> not anymore, Psycode. Not anymore. I left that life. Flying cars wouldn't fix rush hour traffic. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a a traffic backup with with flying cars? Right. So like, you have a backup on the highway, but now it's like four layers deep. And besides, like, the accidents with that would would be absolutely terrible. Right. You'd have two cars slam into each other. You know, six layers up, and then they fall to the ground and hell, the cars blow them. <laughs> Max, that's hilarious. So actually, if you guys, if you want a, um, if you want the true Florida man experience, do yourself a favor and go into Google and type Florida man and your birthday and see what comes up. Guaranteed entertainment. <laughs> that's why I write a complete engine by myself. Yeah, must be. Maybe all those all those years of Florida sun just completely rotted my brain. You already did that, Psycode? Yeah. It's it's a favorite pastime of mine. Florida Man twenty three tried to pay for his McDonald's drive through order with a bag of marijuana. Yeah, that's very that's very Florida. <laughs> That sounds like something that happens there on the daily. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, I forget what mine was. Um, let me pull it up. It was it was really good. Um, uh, here it is. Um, well, okay, stupid ads. Go away. Where can I get the... Here we go. So... <laughs> here's mine. <laughs> you just can't make this stuff up, right? Like, it's too good. <laughs> It's too good. You just, you got to just take time to appreciate the roller coaster ride that is that headline. <laughs> oh man! Like I said, it's a favorite pastime of mine. Florida man hit dad in face with pizza after learning. He helped him. He helped deliver him. Police say, <laughs> "Yeah, it sounds about right." <laughs> Legendary. Yep. Oh, jeez, Tamman. <laughs> yeah, that sounds. That also sounds pretty pretty accurate. You live part time in Dade and part time in San Diego. Yeah, Dade County. Yep. I was in. Uh, I was in Palm Beach County. Which is just as bad these days. Just as crazy. 
I left there um, almost two years ago. <laughs> Dade County rules, yeah. Palm Beach County, not so much. Florida men are just built different. Yes. Yes, they are. I realized I'll, uh, I have all these idealized mental images of Florida and Miami because of GTA Vice City and other pop culture. It is nothing like that. Well, it's like all the bad parts of it, really. Like, all the, like the Florida that they show on, on TV is like a single strip or a portion of a street, and that's it. Miami is legit like GTA in many areas. It's true. Yep. Saw a state trooper chase a Ferrari down the beltway and ticket it. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. It's crazy down there. Yesterday, a woman went to the bank. Wait. Yesterday, a woman went to the bank with a dead uncle trying to do a loan. Yeah, that also sounds very Florida-like. Yeah, for sure. Miami is just like the movies. <laughs> well, okay. So, what GTA sh shows of Florida is really just South Beach, right? If we're being honest. Yeah, the street is 7th Street in Miami Beach. That's like half a block long. That's all of Florida is and all of me. 100%. Yep. Florida men keep the state in check. We have a moment of appreciation towards the Florida men. Love it. Absolutely love it. Okay. So. We don't have a texture pointer anymore. We have texture data. All right, so if we have texture data, then we can potentially have multiple images, right? So we need to look at that and we need to do um, U32. Uh, I guess we could say image count uh, equals text uh, DRA length texture data um, do we actually have did we actually store an image count I'm trying to actually remember that um, I guess we do it's not a DRA right um, well, I guess we don't even need to do this then. We can just do right, I is less, oops, I is less than texture data image count plus plus I. Um, and then do this. All right, uh, this generation, that's going away. It's not a thing anymore. Um, and then we can say that the image here, Ugh, really more spam. Come on guys, go away. Um, coffee lava's friends are back. They're working overtime. I guess they are. Yeah. No kidding. I guess it's the crocodiles in the heat that drive people cra crazy. It's gators. Yeah. Gators, not crocs, but yeah. I think it's it is it is really the heat down there. It's terrible. Um okay, so the image in this case is going to be I don't need this cold cast anymore. Um it's gonna be ads, actually. Because we have ads. Gotta pay the Bezos. Yeah. <laughs> 
the coffee lab with so many of your friends here. That's hilarious. Coffee Lava, what are you up to these days, by the way? How's Nutpad coming along? I suppose I should probably wait for um, ads to end so you can actually hear me. Got about 30 seconds left on ads anyway. <laughs> Not pad is shelved. Okay. That's fair enough. Uh, let me see. Sorry for reposting question in case you didn't see. Trying to get into seriously get into C programming. I wanted to start with the Vim repo. I can't really tell what the entry points are and the make file is pretty convoluted. Are there any repos you recommend for starters getting acquainted with culture and patterns? So I would say... I mean, Vim is pretty large, right? Um, or even NeoVim is pretty large, right? So I probably wouldn't start with something that large to work on um, or to look at. That's probably a little bit, like, especially if you're just getting started. It really depends on what your, where your skill is at, right? Like, um, do you have the... Um, do you have the basics down? You know, do you know about memory management and dealing with pointers and, and things like that? Um and, uh, you know, dealing with all the debugging and, and all that kind of stuff that comes with the C and shooting your foot and self in the foot with memory and all that. Um, if you don't have the basics down, I would not try necessarily looking at too, too much out there yet. I would probably just practice writing things and, and go that way. But you're a professional Java dev, my day job, and did plenty of C for university, but never at a production quality level. Okay, so that does help. Okay. Um, something like Vim is probably a good goal. I don't know if I would start there, though. It's kind of huge, right? That, that'd be like trying to work on GIMP or something. Um, trying to think of something that would be a little bit better of a scope. Is it is it that you want to contribute to something, or is it that you're... Because, like... Culture and patterns varies widely depending on what team you're working with or what product you're working with, right? So it's it's a bit like C++ in that regard where there's a very, very wide array of usage and patterns and things that people follow. So it's, it's kind of hard to, you know, pinpoint that a little bit. You know what I mean? Like the way that I write C is probably different than the way a lot of people write C. Um, or the right way that I would write C++ is probably closer to C than a lot of people who write C++, for example. Um, so it's kind of hard to say. Um, interested in what large project looked like in C and how to maintain them. Contributing to open source seemed like a good deal. Okay, so um, if that's what you're looking to do and you're, and you're wanting to look specifically for large projects, then yeah, something like Vim would be good. Something like... Um, Something like uh, maybe Godot, if you're if you're looking at um, game programming, because um, that's open source. You could you could look in there. Um, although I don't know off the top of my head if that's C or C plus plus. I haven't looked at the source, so I don't. Yeah, I'm thinking that might be C plus plus actually. Um, you could probably do. I think SDL is written in C, isn't it? Yeah, SDL is another good one. Yeah, and Rayleb. Yep. So you could look at um, you could look at either one of those projects for sure. Both are both are probably good places to look. So um, so coffee lava. Why did why did uh why did Nutpad get uh, shelved? Just out of curiosity. 
Uh, let's see, texture data. Images. Sub I. Wanted a good undo system. Got lazy to think of one. Yeah, that's fair. So I actually have um, I have something that I've been working on for a little bit um, called Notepad minus minus, right? Because there's a Notepad plus plus out there. So there's a Notepad minus minus that I'm working on. <laughs> a new Vim Keller, hardly, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it works in the terminal just like like Vim does, right? Even has some of the um, some of the you know some naming similarities and stuff like that. Um, so it's worse than Notepad. So here's the thing. Well, yes, but also no. <laughs> so um, the joke was, uh, and this was actually on Spear's stream, um, is we would basically take, you know, Notepad is at zero, right? Because it's not Notepad++. plus plus. So Notepad is at zero. And if we say that Notepad is an unsigned int, and then we subtract for that, then technically it becomes max int and becomes unbeatable. So that's the joke. Less is more, right? Um, and so I've just been like doing things like um, working out, you know, movement patterns and stuff like that and um, implementing um, search and, you know, just that kind of stuff. Um, and so, yeah, this is something I've been working on a little bit, uh, a little bit, you know, in my spare time. Um, and it, ha it supports Vim, no Vim motions. Uh, and undo is actually the next thing that I'm going to be putting in here, right? So anyway. That was something I figured I would just kind of bring up as a teaser, right? Ship it. <laughs> you even have the status line? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I have the status line. I have similar modes, right? So basically my, my idea with it is I want to make it like my Vim setup is now, but without having to use plugins, right? So I basically want it to be set up just like what we're looking at here. That's my goal. Um, without having to download a bunch of plugins and install it and having them break all the time and stupid stuff like that. So, yeah, that's the goal. Just make sure notepad must mi minus minus is unsigned because if it's, if it's signed, it's undefined behavior. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's definitely unsigned. No one wants to deal with that can of worms. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Notepad one's compliment. Yeah, sweet. So yeah, that's that was the thing I was alluding to earlier that I was working on, kind of on the side. Um, and uh, I'm almost to the point where I can actually use that as an editor to write itself. Almost. So once I hit that point, it's really going to take off. Will you support LSP? Most likely, yeah. Um, and I'll probably have, I'll probably have one in there for C by default. It'll just be there, right? And I might put a couple in there by default. Because that way I don't have to worry about like, again, I'm trying to avoid like, uh, eventually it will have a plugin system, but I'm avoiding, I want to avoid having to have them. Conflict of interest. <laughs> Yeah, I know you don't like LSPs, but the reason you don't like LSPs is because the LSPs that you're using don't work very well, right? They're slow. So I bet you would like it a lot more if the LSPs that came with it didn't suck. Void pointer pad. <laughs> Dereference it for funsies. I'm your rival. Why is that? I mean, mind you, it doesn't. It does not have um, LSP in there. Not even close. You don't want LSPs. In my head, it's going to be a feature that's included but is disable dis disableable. If that's a word, that's kind of what I'm shooting for. Notepad maxent, nice. 
That's essentially what notepad minus minus is, right? <laughs> no, it's because you killed Nutpad before it got released. What do you mean? <laughs> I should I should point this out that um so this version of Notepad minus minus uh I wrote in approximately a week. So it's only been around that long. <laughs> I might actually, maybe if there's enough people interested, I might actually do a, a, a dev stream on it once at some point. But um, yeah, one of the things I want to make it eventually build into it is a debugger that doesn't suck as well. That would be really, really nice to have. Okay. Um, so we destroy the old image. All right, so this one should be ported. Terminal is quite ideal for a text editor. The text rendering is out of the box. Exactly, yep. Um, and I might even, I have to look into the legality of it, but I, I think I might even, well, I might even ship it with a font that you can install on your terminal if you don't have it that supports like this kind of stuff over here, right out of the box. But I, I don't even know if I'm gonna put one of these in there yet. Um, it, if I do, it's probably not gonna be like this. It's gonna be like a pop-up window that comes up in the middle of the screen, kind of like this guy. People like their editor dev streams. That's what got. Uh, that's what I got when I streamed Nutpad Dev. Notepad, yeah. I love the fact that you call it Notepad. That's so good. You could have, um, you could have named plugins for it D's. How many D's do you have installed? Sergey, how's it going? Um, unrelated, but uh, how do you go about abstracting? Vulcan descriptor set layouts. Is it worth reusing them as much as possible or just create them on demand along with the given pipeline? I just create them on demand. Yeah, because um, there's not really... It, there's not that much overhead associated with, right? Like, you're not creating... You're not creating those things all the time, right? Um, I think I do... When I create them, I believe I do store them along with the pipeline, like in the structure alongside the pipeline. So I don't like if I have to recreate the pipeline, I do it. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Like I don't really abstract it. Um, the graphics pipeline as a whole is abstracted from my front end though, along with a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> When you install the command, should be, should be uh, sug on these. <laughs> That's amazing, Magats. I love it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> GI does not work. I give up. GI. Oh, go to implementation. I gotcha. Um, yeah, I don't think that doesn't work for me either. I use um, go to definition on stuff. Global illumin. Dude, if you know what, Psycode, if we have an editor that has global illumination, I'm going to have questions. <laughs> you thought it was global illumination? Yep. It's hard to form a quickly sensible sentence around a zinger. <laughs> Sorry for my bad English. No, you're fine. Yeah, it's not just you, Tamin. Nope. The audio is gone, you said? Oh, it's you. Okay. 
All right. Um, so I think this is going to be pretty much the same, the same deal here. So I'm actually just going to do. What did I do? Yeah. Okay. So I want um, this. Um, so I guess I'll put it here and we can get rid of that useless comment. Oops. Useless comment here. Get rid of that. And then come down here and close off the loop and remove the generation. Right. Uh, what did I just do? Did I have? Oh, I was missing a. I was like, man, that formatter took a second. That's why. Okay. So we got um, we got that done. Let's see if we can condense that a little bit. Um, let's see. Do we even need? Yeah, we do need context down here. Okay, that's fine. All right, so uh, I'm gonna grab this again. So basically, this is more of uh, more or less the pattern that we're gonna follow as far as texture management goes, right? Uh, most of the cases, we're only gonna be dealing with one texture, uh, but this case, it keep th this way, we actually keep things um, more flexible. So we do that, and then we come down here, right? And it's essentially it just becomes a loop of one. Right, um, but if we have multiple backend images, then we're we're good to go. We don't have to worry about um, supporting any of that stuff on the front end anymore. So there's that one, and then I think there's one more. Yeah. So right where we do this, this rather. Paste that there, go to the bottom. And I'm thinking at some point, I might try to combine some of these functions into one and just, you know, kind of switch on things a little bit. Get rid of this other buffer over here. Um, okay, so let's see, do we have, yeah, okay, that's shader stuff. So I'm gonna go up a couple functions. So we have write data. Okay, so resize. Let me just make sure that there's nothing in here that I also want to sort of condense a little bit. Um, yeah, some of this stuff I feel like could be potentially on one line. make a little less to scroll through, right? Okay. So we should be good on that. All right, and that one looks pretty good. Ay, ay, ay. Another spam. Another spam. All right, what is bad? All right. There's a, some shortcut key in Firefox that mutes the tab. Control M.
What kind of a key binding for sound is control M? I guess mute, right? But like, then unmute is U. Yeah, it's just weird. Uh, do you have support for atlases? Um, if you're talking like, um, well, technically, yes. We do, we use atlases for fonts, actually. So, yeah, technically. Um, I don't have, a, like, a structure or anything called an atlas, but we do have a, the ability to look up into um, a texture using texture coordinates and all that stuff. So, um, I mean, adding that would be trivial, right? It would just be just adding a structure that gives us um, measurements across the texture and divvies up the texture, right? That wouldn't be wouldn't be too difficult. Whole squad is here. Yeah, seems like it. Someone should make a text editor that can run in the background and instead of saving the file, it sends it sends it to the author. Maybe name it kilogram after the best you've done to measure. Or I could name it Florida Man. <laughs> or or FL edit. I'm a real viewer. Please don't ban me. Beep boop. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out what's going on with this bot. It's being a real bananas tonight, and not wanting it to work. Need a name for Nutpads plugin manager? Yeah. Can you hot reload a scene file yet? Hot reloading? No. But you can. Um, Right, because hot, loading, hot reloading a scene would be weird, right? Because what if you change the hierarchy? You'd have to unload the scene and reload it, right? But what you can do is um, you can open a scene and modify it, unload the scene and reload the scene. And that you could do. With the engine running, you don't have to like shut the engine down or anything. So from that standpoint, yes, we just don't have anything that automatically does that. Nor do I think I would add it. Because uh, we're eventually going to build a uh, an editor for that kind of stuff, right? And we also have the ability to save to a scene file, so. <laughs> FL Studio, Florida Studio confirmed? Maybe. FL Edit, every time you save, there's a non-trivial chance that you might RF, RMF, R, RM, RF the directory. That is amazing and deeply hilarious. The editor that deletes itself. <laughs> Roll the dice. Actually, what's funny is you could actually do that on Linux. You couldn't do that on Windows, but you could do it on Linux. You meant a keylogger, but that works too. Uh, I'm not the only one. Uh, plenty of other streams I've watched today have been getting these spam messages. It's definitely ramped up recently. Yeah, and my bot is not here to take care of them for some reason. They're not getting flagged by bot detection tools. Yeah, but I think um, I think the bot itself is actually down, right? So if I, if I do uh, Discord like that in chat, it doesn't it doesn't respond. So I'm just um, I'm wondering if maybe there's something going on with the bot itself. Uh, what's your tip to avoid massive pipeline pipeline combinatorics before I get too deep, deep into the Vulcan thing? Um, I haven't avoided it, to be honest. Um, in fact, I have some pretty gross code around it that I want to refactor at some point. Um, so we have. And, and part of this, part of what I've done here is for um, is for maximum compatibility, right? But um, uh, let's see. So clear highlights. So we have um, two sets of pipeline pipelines, right? One set um, for just random, like or you know, regular old 
geometry and then one set for wireframe right because you can't you can't change that um between wireframe and not in dynamic state and also have it be supported on mac os right which is a breaking consideration for me so i have to have separate sets of pipelines for that um now i do have pipelines here right so i have um pipelines that are i do i still have yeah, we have one pipeline per topology class, right? So um, the shader can can uh, can note whether it's going to use um, triangles, whether it's going to use um, lines or points, right? So the shader can actually the shader config uh, can tell us that. So we can use any combination of those things, and we can create up to one pipeline um, per one of those things. So one of those for non wireframe view, and one of those for wireframe view, um, because you can't also change dynamic states between topologies um, across the board either. So there's some kind of nastiness around that as well. There are extensions that make it easier. The problem with that is, is those extensions aren't available everywhere. Specifically, they're not available on Mac OS, which is one of the targets that I support. So um, until I have uh, the ability to write the metal back end for that um i am sort of my hands are tied on that so um and honestly what i might do is if i if i get that working somehow in the metal back end i might look into seeing maybe if i can contribute that to molten vk but that's a ways off right eventually But yeah, most, most of the things that I'm doing in here are because I'm trying to keep kind of a wide um, a wide compatibility radius, right? All right, so. Uh, where was I? So we created the, we converted all the, um, all the render texture stuff. We did that on the Vulkan back end. We need to do that on the front end. We need to change the way that these are referenced as well. So we really need. So instead of texture resize, taking a texture handle, um, it's going to take a K handle. Um, and we'll say render texture handle. And we're going to change that for all of these guys. So we're going to change it for that one. We're going to change it for that one. And we're going to change it for that one. Right. Um, and then since this is the front end that the rest of the engine um, integrates with, um, we're going to say a handle to the texture to be resized. Handle, 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 right? Because we're not going to deal with pointers anymore. Um, and then I think actually I saw the parameter name is wrong. Right, so that needs to be updated as well. All right. Um, okay. You're going to have ads here in a minute, by the way. Pipeline descriptor sets indeed are the hardest part to abstract away in a performant way. Not a trivial thing. Most people that use Vulcan faces. Yeah. And there's another thing that we discussed on the last stream, actually, which is, um, ads. We will cover that when we get back from ads. What a cliffhanger, huh? There's a Linux distro called Suicide Linux that does basically that. Are you saying it basically just RMFRFs? Just randomly? Why would you ever want to install that? <laughs> Except for the lols. 
Or to, I guess, to prank somebody, right? But I feel like that could be accomplished with a script. It's crazy that there's a distro out there for that. <laughs> You're not a sub, but you don't get ads. I wonder why. Well, I mean, it's it's based on... So ads are based on region and locale, right? So if there is... Uh, well, it's also, it's also based on platform. So if there is nothing to fill that ad slot for where you are and what platform you're on, then you're not going to get them. Just use tails Linux only lives in the Ram. I mean, I have enough Ram on this computer. I could probably do that. Right. Um, there was a, uh, that's like a, a, what would, what did they call it? Pre-installation environment that exists for windows. Kind of the same thing. All right, uh, ads are back, or ads are dead, rather. Um, so uh, we were talking about this thing on uh, on stream last time about uh, how the let me think what was it? It was the pipeline and what was the other thing? It was the pipeline and something else that both require the render pass to be like a compatible, like render pass compatibility, render pass format info. Yeah, I forget what the other thing was. Um, but yeah, uh, the fact that you have to have that stuff in order to set those things up means you have to pass those things around or create dummy ones, which is what I'm gonna do. Uh, frame buffers was, yeah, that's what it was. Yep, frame, buff frame buffers was the other one. So that's another thing I have to address and I'm actually gonna be addressing that. Um, as we refactor our renderer backend. That's one of the things on the list that I'm gonna be addressing. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do for that is when we, when we stand up the pipeline and we stand up the, um, when we stand up the frame buffer, we know at both of those times what the attachments are, what types they are, the order that they are, the formats that they are. We know all that stuff, right? Um, and so what I'm gonna do is whenever I go to create one of those things, I'm just gonna stand up a dummy render pass that matches that format info and stand up the pipeline or stand up the uh, the frame buffer, pass that in there. And then as soon as that thing's created, I'm gonna nuke it, right? Because it only has to be compatible. It doesn't have to be the actual instance. So it's super annoying, super obnoxious, but that's that's my plan to get around that. And I was thinking, well, I could maybe cache them somewhere, but eh, there's not that much overhead in, uh, in actually uh, just creating and throwing away a render pass, right? Especially if we never use it. Dynamic rendering would get rid of it, but I can't use dynamic rendering because of Mac. Womp womp. Use dummy stuff on the scripters, empty set layout, and empty sets that... Uh, for slots that aren't used. Yeah, exactly. It's the same kind of um, the same kind of idea, right? Haven't tried using it on the render pass. Might try it as well. Yeah. So, yeah, because if you read the spec, the spec says um, uh, let me pull it up. Um, uh, let me think. Um, BK Create pipeline layout, I think is what it requires that. Um, so here's the create info. Where was that? Um, you know what? Let me do, um, let me do this, right? Cause I'm pretty sure this, yeah, right here, the render pass, right? So if we go down to uh, render pass, render pass, defining what the render passes, the frame buffer will be compatible with that word right there will be compatible with. See render pass compatibility for details. 
Um, oh, of course, it's going to link the entire freaking... And then not scroll to it when it loads. But basically, it's... it's um, you don't have to actually have the actual render pass. You just have to have a compatible one. I hate the site with the passion. Yeah. Um, I wish they would... I wish everything was, like, broken up into individual pages like this. I don't know why from the individual page they link to the whole huge page. Like... Um, render pass compatibility. Uh, is there no... It's going to make me load the whole stupid page, isn't it? Probably. Um, right here, 8.3. Yeah, so here. Here's the info that we're looking for. Uh, your happy place. Thank you for the prime. I appreciate that. What's the size of the spec? Like memory usage, stat-wise, spec page? You know... I would investigate by opening dev tools, but I the last time I tried that on this page, like the full blown page, it actually crashed my entire browser because it tried to load, you know, all the dev tools for the entire page and it just didn't like it. So I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> if that gives you any idea of what kind of usage it is, yeah. Um, but basically it says, um, matching format and sample count, right? Um, all corresponding pairs of attachments are compatible. Um, initial and final image layouts, load and store operations, and uh, image layout and attachment references, right? Like that, that is like, we, we have all this stuff, right? So I see no reason that we couldn't create a dummy render pass and then use that. Exactly. Yep. On Brave, you can only hover on the tab and it shows memory usage. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Let me see. I'm clicking to this big stupid thing again. I know when um, when Chrome sleeps tabs, it'll occasionally show me how, how much memory it's saving, but... No way. There's no way that that's only 21 megs of memory. There's no way. Like, what if I hit end? Oh, that was actually pretty fast. Maybe they've optimized it? I feel like that's got to be more. That, that's, that's lies, right? Like, there's no way. Like, maybe if I... Let me, like scroll through and stop and like actually make it render the things unless they're actually being like yeah there it is yep <laughs> there it is <laughs> 2.7 gigs that's what I was expecting <laughs> can you see why I don't want to open up the dev tools for that Modern web dev in a nutshell, yeah. Take that, node modules. <laughs> 2.7 gigabytes. I wonder, like... Did it go up just by me doing this, I wonder? No? It just took that long to load all that stuff in there. That's a lot of textures. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude, my, my engine doesn't even currently rec like take that much my game engine doesn't even currently reserve that much <laughs> that's awesome uh, there's nothing about that I don't like that's a lot more than the stream or the stream page yep exactly they should at least lazy load the monstrosity but they don't they load the whole thing in well, okay. So there there is right. Um, let me see, can I 
there is this, right? Loading, please wait. So they load this and then lazy load the entire gigantic rest of it all at once. So they are lazy loading it, but not really. They should split it up into separate pages. There's no reason for that, but it is what it is, I guess. Pretend lazy load, yeah. Now it's saying 1.4, but again, I haven't like done this, so it's probably like not a, not even all loaded yet. I wonder. I mean, are they just doing math dot random behind this? Like, <laughs> they could at least show some sort of indicator. I mean, yeah, user experience, right? I mean, this this type of thing would never have been acceptable in the '90s, right? Can, can you imagine a '90s web browser loading a page this big? Yeah, math dot random, math dot random on this guy. Like, you know, last time it was two point seven gigs. Now it's saying one point four. Yeah, and a 56K modem, which is really like 50, 53K max if you were lucky. Anyway. The PDF version is 4.2 megs. Yeah. Well, okay, so I believe that the... I believe that the, the document like structure itself, like this is mostly all just text, right? There's not a lot of images here. In fact, I think the only image is this one. Right, so the actual structure of the data doesn't doesn't take up much of anything. It's the rendering of it that takes everything, and the parsing of all of all of that, the tag soup. What does that website do? Yeah, so I mean, yeah, see, it just climbed to two gigs. You suspect the page is actually building the site when you load it? Could be. When I was a kid, there was the there was a Japanese page for the Final Fantasy VII movie. I would open it. It was super slow. It took like six hours for me to open it. Jeez. So you mean the um, uh, oh shoot, what was that called? I just had it on the tip of my brain. The Final Fantasy movie that came out ages ago. I can't think of the name of it. Dang it. And I even have it on I even have it on DVD. Advent Children, that was it. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when that came out. For sure. Something extremely wrong going on this on in the spec page. Well, I would say there's a couple of things wrong. I would say one of the things wrong is Chrome, right? I bet I bet. I don't. I wonder if Firefox gives you like these, the same type of thing, right? Like if I load this up in Firefox, first of all, look how much faster that loaded, and it actually took me to the bookmark. So can we just point that out real quick? The difference between Chrome and Firefox, right there. Um, I don't know. I haven't used Firefox in a while. I might actually need to, I might actually switch back. Just, just like loading that alone. The difference is crazy. Uh, is there anything here that tells me how much memory this takes? Mm. Sure. We'll take a snapshot. Oh boy. One gigabyte on Firefox. But again, like, it's the DOM taking all that. That's what's happening. It's the DOM, right? Because you have so many friggin' tags through here. Firefox is, like, infinitely faster, but still, that's why it takes so much. 
it's it's all the it's all the dom and all the crap that it takes to actually render this out like this. <laughs> the Vulcan page is larger than the Evan children movie. No, I mean, like I said, the page the page is light. It's all of the memory that has to allocate, um, be allocated by the browser to render it and to represent it. That's taken all the weight. Sad that the usage is something that wouldn't fit on the CD-ROM. Yeah, right? For you, the spec loaded in Chrome in less than one second and uses 56 megabytes. The whole thing? That's kind of nuts if that's the case. But, I mean, you know, I'm using the most up-to-date version of Chrome, so I'm not sure... Yeah, they should separate it into chapters or something. I agree. Uh, does this game engine support 2D? So the game engine indirectly supports 2D. Yeah, so um, it's a 3D engine, right? But really the only difference between 2D and 3D is you don't use the Z-axis for 2D. Um, and you potentially don't use a depth buffer, right? So if you turn those two things off, yeah, you have 2D. So, yes. Um, <clears throat> riding the struggle bait and bus today. Home internet is down, then your mobile data went down, so no hotspot. Had to drive up to McDonald's and use their Wi Fi to con connect. Nice. That's dedication. You got some McNuggets out of the situation. That's awesome. Man, dude, when it comes to the, the struggle bus, like, I am the pilot of the struggle bus, I feel like, some days. I don't just ride it. I pilot it. All right. Um, that being said, I do have to get up for work in the morning. So I actually am going to have to end uh, the stream. Um, we got some stuff done tonight. We'll get we'll get some more done tomorrow. Um, and maybe I'll be able to get a little bit done offline. We'll see. Um, but I need to look for somebody to raid. But before I do, um, I will drop my... Um, well, actually, I guess I won't drop my socials because the uh, the bot is broken tonight, so I won't do that. But, um, yeah, if you guys haven't already, um, I would really appreciate a follow on the Twitch and or YouTube side. It helps me grow the channel. Um, so, yeah, thank you for that. And don't worry, Psychota. I enjoy talking with you guys, right? It's not a distraction at all. Um, I, I enjoy the, the conversations we have here. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, let, me, let me pick somebody to raid. Ooh, I know who I'm going to raid. He's never online. I never get to raid him. We are going to raid Spiro. Because I never get to raid him. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for uh, being here. I really appreciate it. And uh, we will uh, see you guys in the next stream. So, all right. See ya.